Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone's safe and well and carrying on shooting photography, whether you're indoors in your garden or whether you're out on your exercise. I had a camera sent to me from Martin Besler all the way from Germany and uh, he's one of my Patreons and Martin said, do you fancy trying out a Holger camera? And it's a camera that I've never really thought about buying before. I know it's a toy camera. I've seen stuff online about it. I've seen a couple of YouTube videos about the whole camera in the past, but it's never really appealed to me, you know, and until it lands on your doorstep, you look at it and you think, what can it do? What can I do with it? You know, what creations can I make with this toy Holger camera? So when I got the camera, I started to look more online about the Holger, and do you know what? I was amazed to find how many people absolutely love shooting Holger cameras, so uh, how bad can it be? So I thought I'd put some rolls of film in, go out and start shooting. But before that, if you don't know anything about the Holger camera, I'll just give you a quick tour, and then uh, I've already shot two rolls of film, then my chair's just gone down. Oh, it's gone down again. <laughs> it's like a fairground in here. Um, I've already shot two rolls of film. The first one was underexposed. The second one, I learnt me lesson and went out and, and, and did another shoot, including a, a long exposure six hour um, star trail, which didn't come out too well. I'll just talk about the camera anyway, show you first. So this is the Holger 120N camera. I'm not claiming to know anything about this camera. It's just stuff that I've seen online. Most of you know me, I'll grab shit and go out and shoot it and see what I think. Um, so anyway, this is the camera here, the Holger. Very simple, very light. When you look at it compared to the cameras, medium format cameras that I'm used to, which is uh, this um, Salida 6x6 medium format camera. And my Zeiss Icon Netar, another 6x6 camera, and uh, a couple of pinhole cameras that I've got as well. They're also 6x6. I quite like the 6x6 format. Um, but in comparison, this is so light. It's just, it, it, it really is light. I can't, I can't describe. Even my daughter picked it up and she, and she went, wow, Dad. I said, yeah, it's light. And she said, yeah, it's light. I said, yeah, it is light. Anyway, so it's real basic in design. You've got your total lens cap off. That's your lens. It's a 60 millimeter lens, which in medium format terms, it's, it's probably around 35 millimeters. Uh, so it's nice and wide to get shots with. There's only two apertures, and these are the apertures here that you select. Um, one is cloudy, it's a little sign. It's cloudy sign, which I believe is F8. And the other one is, click it over, is a sun. And that, I believe, is F11. The lens has got different focal distances. So you've got little mountains, which is obviously infinite or landscape. And you've got a group of people, probably five or six or seven or eight people. Then you've got a small family, and then you've got closer a portrait. There is information on the uh, on the instructions what these distances are. I can't remember what they are off the top of my head. That's your shutter there, pretty simple. And the shutter speed is one one hundredth of a second approximately. So that is one hundredth of a second. That's your take up. Advance there. Nice little clicks, feels good. Uh, on the back, you've got a window. So you've got, um, if I open the back, you've got these little tiny clasps here. You pop, you can either pop them straight out or put them down. I'll put them down and I can pull the back off. If you look inside, I hope you, I don't know if you can see that inside, but if you look inside, um, it's a very simple, there's the shutter there. Very simple mechanism. The whole thing is just plastic, apart from a couple of little bits of metal springs and whatnot. Uh, that's the take-up spool. That goes over this side when it's taken up. Let's take it out. And you've got these little bits of sponge here that keep the film taut as it's being taken up. I find, I've found loading it is a little bit tricky, but it's just, you know, a case of getting used to stuff, isn't it? So uh, that take-up spool sitting in there now. So that's the back of the camera anyway, and the red window, I didn't trust the red window too much, so I'm using six by six. So what I did, I just taped up that part. So when I'm shooting, I can advance, see where I'm advancing to, close the window, and no light's gonna come through that. I just taped it up. I wasn't 100% sure if that would leak. So that's a six by six um, frame. You can take that out, 
And that is, a, uh, I haven't opened it, but that's a 645, a bit like your Mamiya. It's a 645 um, size format. Um, but I shoot six by six, my favorite format, so I pop that back in. That's it really, at the bottom, the bottom of the camera you've got option of uh, normal shutter or bulb shutter. So if you want to shoot bulb or longer exposures, you click it over to bulb and you can keep the shutter open, if you can see that, but you can keep the shutter open. Trouble is there's no cable release, I don't know if there's an option for a cable release for this camera. Um, I haven't looked that far, but I had a workaround by just sticking a little tiny piece of card. I'll show you. When I went outside and did my long exposure, and as I pulled the shutter, I had the lens on, the lens cap on, and then I pulled it down. That held the shutter in place, and then I just took off the lens cap uh, and did a six hour exposure at the stars, well, actually on v planet Venus. And then after six hours, put the lens cap back on. That was it, just took the camera off and pulled that little bit of card out. Now I'm not too sure what it's like for light leaks, it is plastic, there's lots of little tiny openings. I'm not sure about the back, those pins don't seem to uh, be that solid. So I'd be inclined to more than likely put some tape over the back if I wanted to go out and do some uh, fun shoots. I haven't done that yet because you know, I'm trying this camera out and that's part of it. If the back popped off, that's a piece of experience that I'd have to learn by. Um, but in the future, I'll probably put some tape around it. Um, I reckon these these uh, retainers will more than likely lose their, their, their grip and the back will probably come flying off at some point. The only other thing I found was the, was the tripod mount. It's not quite flush with the bottom. And uh, whenever I put a tripod mount on there, it was kind of... Um, it wasn't flat, it wasn't straight, it, 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 was, it was sort of angled, um, which I found to be a bit of a pain. But, you know, it uh, is what it is, isn't it? I think these are only about $20, $30 or $40. You can still find them online. I'm not sure if, if they're sold brand new still, but um, I, I managed to find some online that I could buy. Uh, and they're relatively cheap as well. <laughs> of cameras that I use for certain types of photography so I've got my cameras that I, I use for street photography cameras that I use for landscape seascape cameras that I use for portrait photography and I was kind of you know figuring out where the whole good would fit in now I've done a lot of creative stuff with the pinhole cameras and I've really enjoyed shooting them you know, I don't want to take the whole go down to do seascapes or or do portraits, you know, it, it'll look, it'll have a, its own distinctive look, of course it will, but what if I can come up with, you know, some new style of photography for myself, where the Holger would shoot, so every time I wanted to shoot that style of photography, I'll pull the Holger out and do it with that, that way I've got a whole series of that style using a Holger camera, so I was looking around my front room thinking what, you know, what can I shoot with, with this Holger, and then I noticed there was a lamp in my front room, and I had to clear it away and I thought that might take a nice photograph. So I burst a whole roll of foam, foam pan 400, uh, different exposures, because I wasn't quite sure um, you know, how the hold would hold up. I'm not sure if the shutter speeds are accurate or the apertures are accurate. So I burst a whole roll of this scene. I developed the negatives, I was quite happy with what I've got. So I'm gonna get in the dark room and try and make um, a print and try and find a new style of photography for myself that I can go forward with and grab the holger uh, to continue that journey, if that makes sense. So I'm in my dark room now, it's Saturday afternoon, so it's time for a bottle of beer while I'm doing some developing, printing even. <laughs> and I'm just about to make a print of the lamp that I showed you uh, before. And I quite like the negative, so I've put it on the enlarger, I started to do some tests and I'm ready to make a print. I don't want to make this uh, a clean print, I want to do a bit of burning and dodging 
and just try and make it look a little bit rough really uh, around the edges so that's exactly what I'm trying to achieve at the moment you can see my test strips here behind me um, I'm using some Kentmere glossy paper for this and I'll be printing uh, seven and a half by seven and a half square print so I'll show you what I've been up to so I put a two and a half grade filter on the enlarger that's my rock to stand on and then I did my first test um, at 10 seconds with a two and a half grade filter on I just had a hunch I didn't do any test strips like normal I just put a piece of paper under there and uh, did a test here which you can see 10 seconds uh, two and a half grade filter and the reason I did this I just wanted to see what you know where the light was falling around this image and I noticed at the bottom of the image it, you know 10 seconds was way too much I'd killed the books and the bottom of the lamp and the table and the umbrella you can't see it. it's just gone too dark uh, but that's okay because I can work around that so then I did a second test just on the books up here at three seconds and now I can start seeing detail in the books which is where I want it to be so you know now I've got a conflict the whole the whole um, the top of the piece looks good at 10 seconds but the bottom um, is way too dark three seconds is enough so then I did a second test print, as you can see here, just at three seconds. So I can see uh, how the bottom of the image is going to be falling. And like I said, the books are okay. This bit's a little bit too light. But I'd rather make my base just three seconds and then uh, use the burn tool to burn the rest of the stuff in rather than go 10 seconds and try and dodge these areas. I'll be all fingers and thumbs trying to do that. So I did a... I did a uh, another test print at 15 seconds just for the top of the lamp area here and uh, so I've got 15 seconds at the top of the lamp so here it is this is the uh, image on the enlarger being projected I haven't got any paper there obviously at the moment but I'll just give you an idea what I'm doing I'm going to burn the whole lot for three seconds that's my base and rock to stand on and then the rest of the image I'm just going to use my dodge card here you can see a hole inside that's going to project light through all the areas that I want to burn in for extra time to make it go darker. So such as the uh, top of the lamp we said, can you see the top of the lamp there? Yeah, you can. The top of the lamp we said um, an extra five seconds. So I'll be just doing this for five seconds uh, towards the end. But these parts around here, I'll be burning for an extra seven seconds, especially on top of the books and just under this part here. So uh, let's see how we get on. Just make sure this gets weighted down so no light seeps underneath it. Right, so, so we'll just do our first three seconds. There it goes. And now I need to start burning in the areas that I wanted for seven seconds. So I'm going to start on this side first and I'll count it in. I haven't done anything yet. Just gonna try and find where I need to be. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, 13, 14, just a little bit around the table. Now on top of the books now. Two, three, four, five. And then around this part, the top there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 14 just around the umbrella at the top 8 around the sides okay and then 1 2 3 4 5 and then I'm just going to use my hand to get the top part of the image for that uh, extra five se uh, seven seconds 1 2 3 4 five six seven and off now you might notice that i was counting more than seven i was counting to 14 that's because i'm not the hole isn't covering the whole image it's kind of doing half of the image i did two different sides um, of the same side uh, so i did 
Um, I, you can see the hole was doing this. If I did that for seven seconds, it wouldn't have got enough. So I doubled it up to 14, and then I did the same again this side for 14. I don't know, we'll see how it gets on. And it goes. This is Ilford's multi-grade developer. I needed to hit the top of the vase actually, I think. It's coming on okay actually. So back out of the dark room now and I made a few prints. This was the first one that I did of the lamp uh, and I was using the a small dodge card, a small, small burn hole card you can see, but I uh, just didn't quite manage to get it right down here. You can, you can see obvious burn marks where I was burning in. So I had to try another one straight afterwards uh, and I made a much bigger burn hole this time so I could literally hit this area for seven seconds straight off and you can see it's a much better image. So I was quite happy with that. I was, you know, uh, it's just trying out new things and playing around. And so on this one, I did quite a bit of dodging and burning. Uh, a lamp with some books, artistic. I don't know, is what it is, isn't it? So um, yeah, that's that print. And that was from me second time shooting the Holger. That was uh, another roll of Pan F. Uh, that was a roll, the first roll of Pan F 400 that I tried, you can see that. And yeah, the skies are quite nice. It's just a lamppost with some electric cables and a light on it, um, which was near to the farm where I was shooting. So that one came out not too bad. And I did another print from the second run. That was, the, that was some cows in the farm. If I can get that sheen off. This is glossy paper. It's a nightmare to show on camera. There it is, right. Here's some cows there. Um, they came out all right. I think you see that. Cows come out all right. That was the star trail that I did from the first time using the Holger with the um, Foma Pan 200 and not as, not as really as good as I was hoping for but there's Venus there you can see coming from uh, the top down to the bottom and I also ran a uh, Pentax, not Pentax, a, a Shinon 35mm camera with a roll of Kodak uh, uh, BWX in there uh, at the same time when I was running the Holger. So that was out there for six hours standing next to the Holger, that one. And that's a little bit better, but the, 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 you can see Venus, but the other stars you can't really see. Um, so a little bit more playing around with star trails, I reckon. So that's my first time trying out this Holger camera. And like I said, it's, I, I more likely wouldn't have ever gone out and bought one of these, but it landed on my doorstep. Thanks very much to Martin for sending it to me. And I've really enjoyed using it, enjoyed shooting it. I've only shot three rolls, but uh, I'm looking forward to playing around with this more in the future. And like I said, it's not the sort of camera that I would, probably wouldn't take it down to the beach to do seascapes with. I've got other cameras uh, that can do that, but I want to try and find you know, where this camera is going to shoot me in, in, in my own style and my own way of doing photography, as such as the lamp, you know, taking a shot of that last night having a JD and then going in the dark room and doing some dodging and burning, just trying to come up with something quirky really. So um, I'm more likely going to continue using this in that kind of way uh, for my photography, if that makes sense. But fantastic little camera. I'm so pleased that, that I've managed to um, have a bit of experience with it and, uh, and, and take some photographs. So anyway, guys, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching and stay safe. I'll catch you next time.